Prime Minister Modi is banking on LIC's IPO to fix his budget this year. His government could be raising up to 80,000 crore rupees in a public offering that could value the behemoth at between 10 to 15 lakh crore rupees. That's 150 to 200 billion dollars. You know, the guy he needs to thank uh, for his bailout is, well, former Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru, who set up the Life Insurance Corporation of India in 1956 by nationalizing and merging 154 domestic insurers, 16 foreign outfits and 75 provident uh, companies. But I guess you will, not, you will not find Nehru's mugshot on the DRHP, which is the Draft Red Herring Prospectus. Now, the Modi government has pulled out all the stops uh, to float LIC. The securities regulator has changed its rules to allow a mere 5% of the shares to be sold to investors. Ten marquee investment banks from Wall Street icons like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan to scrappy, aggressive local dealers like uh, JM Financial and Kotak Mahindra, they have been appointed. The law has been amended to put LIC's policyholders at par at par with employees now there, thereby enabling them to get 10% of the float at a 10% discount. Yet the government may balk at selling the whole lot in one go. I guess the route suffered by two earlier insurance IPOs, that's GIC and New India Assurance, who have uh, wiped out over half of their IPO value. Now that could be scaring the government. In any case, uh, uh, many people doubt the ability of Indian markets to, to absorb 80,000 crores in, in one shot. So there is talk of breaking up the offer in two tranches of about 40,000 crore rupees each. Uh, you know, sell, burp and sell again. But the government uh, could be betraying a, a terrible lack of confidence and thereby missing a trick here. LIC is touted as the strongest insurance brand in Asia by the London-based consultancy uh, firm Brand Finance. At number three, uh, LIC trails Italy's Poste Italian and, uh, and Spain's Mafre, but is ahead of, uh, ahead of China's Ping An Insurance and South Korea's Samsung Life Insurance. Of course, in terms of uh, brand value, it trails several Chinese, German, French and American companies yet yet comes in strong at number 10 with $8.65 billion. What's more, its uh, brand value has increased, increased by 6.8% in a year in which the total brand value of the top 100 insurance companies in the world has dipped by 6% uh, because of the pandemic. However, the KO punch lies beyond the abstract concepts of uh, brand value and strength. It lies in hard operating numbers and the tangible metrics of uh, market capitalization. Now, here's a head-to-head -head comparison with China Life Insurance Group Company, which is the biggest uh, in that country. LIC has nearly 3 million field agents versus China Life's 1.8 million Salesforce channels. Both companies have sold nearly 300 million policies. LIC's 66% market share is superior to China Life's half a billion customers. LIC's market cap at listing is expected to be in the 150 to 200 billion dollar range, higher than China Life's 90 to 100 billion. LIC will be listed on NSE and BSE in India. China Life is listed in Shanghai, Hong Kong, and New York. Now, now read the last two points again, slowly and deliberately. Deliberately. LIC has a bigger market value than China Life, but LIC is being confined to India, while China Life has aggressively listed in competitive global stock exchanges. Now think a bit out of the box, think bold. Why should we slice the offering in two tranches separated by, by several months simply because we are scared our local investors may not have enough appetite? Instead, why don't we sell half the issue in India and simultaneously sell the other half overseas. Also, why shouldn't we do a Neeraj Chopra with LIC? Why should we always resign ourselves to playing second fiddle to China? Why should we accept that as our destiny? Especially since LIC at a market cap of 100, 150, 200 billion dollars may have the potential to beat five Chinese majors, including uh, China Life, Ping An, uh, China Pacific Insurance, China's AIA and People's Insurance Company of China. 
Finally, why should we stay safe and isolated in our backyard? Why can't we beard the lion in uh, his den? Why can't we venture into their backyard, fearlessly list LIC in Hong Kong, perhaps even in Shanghai if uh, uh, regulations were to uh, any time permit that, and get their measure on neutral turf in London and New York? Wait, wait, the naysayers will yelp. Will LIC's balance sheet withstand international scrutiny? Will ruthless forensics by foreign investors expose its warts? Will it become susceptible to global market shocks? Will its stock price survive volatile foreign exchange movements? And taking final, final refuge behind pusillanimous uh, laws, don't India's money laundering rules bar us from venturing into Hong Kong and Shanghai uh, stock exchanges? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. We risk averse Indians can rationalize anything and keep the ship anchored in a safe domestic harbor. Or, or we could take a cue from the SEBI report of 2018, which had recommended that the time was right, was correct to open Hong Kong and China for our companies. Now the choice is ours. We can either stay unscratched in the Delhi Zoo or we can go and slay the dragon in its den. For a minute, just imagine the headline. Top Indian insurer lists in Shanghai or even Hong Kong at a bigger market cap than China Life. Gosh, it will be such a it will be such a triumph of India's foreign policy as much as of her economy.